episode of Tesla Truck Skepticism. I was just watching some videos about the Tesla truck, and uh, I something I hadn't really quite thought about that these videos brought up to uh, brought out to light for me was the uh, sheer weight. I don't know what exactly they're going to uh, what they're predicting the weight of this truck is going to be, but batteries are not light by any imagination obviously i mean if you've ever i mean if you've ever picked up a car battery which is you know a little battery a little tiny battery for the most part uh you can you'll, you'll see that they weigh a good 30 pounds or so you know they're not light so i'm not really sure exactly what they're gonna well, see the thing is with the video i watched he made a good point uh, Elon Musk never mentioned in the debut how much the truck will weigh. Uh, he, he mentioned a lot of other things that might sound appealing, like zero to 60 times and uh, drag coefficients, things of that nature. But he did not mention the weight. And here's the problem with that. Any truck driver knows out there, well, let me, let me ask you all this. What is the most valuable thing, the most valuable part of any 18-wheeler. I'll give you a second. What's the most valuable aspect, commodity, whatever, part of that truck? The most valuable part would be the load you are carrying. That makes the company money, it makes the customer money, um, and the load itself is worth a lot of money. Here's the dilemma. You've got a truck going with the diesel trucks. Um, a diesel semi truck, depending, I mean, there's all, there's all different variations. Uh, you know, uh, a reefer truck is going to weigh more than a drive-in. Um, you know, a reefer, a refrigerated truck, you know, but way more than a dry van because a reefer trailer has a, has a, or has a, a diesel engine sticking off the front of it uh, with a, a diesel fuel tank below that can be anywhere from a 25 gallon to a 100 gallon fuel tank. You're talking about eight and a quarter pounds or so per gallon of fuel. So, you know, you add that up, it, it all adds weight to that trailer. Not to mention a reefer trailer is just built heavier. You know, I mean, it's got uh, thicker walls. It's insulated, you know, so it's got thicker metal, you know, or metal and fiberglass, I assume. There's some fiberglass in there from the looks of it. Uh, you know, it's just built a lot more sturdy than a dry van. Dry vans are obviously light. Then you have flat beds that can uh, be heavier than they look, uh, you know, or they can be not that heavy depending on the type of dry van and the type of freight or the type of uh, flatbed and the type of freight you're going to haul and uh, things of that nature and then you've got the truck itself you know different trucks weigh different different weights uh, you have um, you know for example the truck I'm in right now uh, Volvo 670 it's a fairly light truck uh, I, I, I pull a reefer so I pull a heavier trailer um, the truck and trailer combo weigh right around, I want to say about 35,000 pounds. Um, yeah, right, give or take, they're about, you know, 35,000 pounds is about what it is. So that leaves, uh, well, actually, I take that back. It's actually closer to about 36. So that leaves the tear weight of the 80,000 pounds uh, that you're allowed which means you are allowed an additional 44,000 pounds of cargo in the box, in the trailer. All right, um, the heavier your truck is, the less cargo you can haul, or at least the lighter cargo you can haul, you know? Or if you wanna haul you know, a heavier cargo, you can't haul as much of it, you know, things like that. So that will, that will diminish your ability to earn a paycheck you know all these things like that they will come into play now the battery from what I've from what I heard anyway could weigh 
as much as this truck alone, when I say the truck, I mean just the tractor, which is about 14, 15,000 pounds. It could weigh as much as this truck alone, which means you'll have the weight of the battery, which, you know, think about that. This truck, the weight of the truck, that includes the diesel engine. Okay, so you're talking about the power plant of that truck alone will weigh roughly what this truck weighs completely. So you add on the cab and all the interior and everything, you're probably going to be looking at close to, I mean, depending on the types of uh, materials they use, I'd say close to 25,000 pounds for the tractor by itself, which would jack the, uh, the net or the, the, the gross weight of the whole truck up to closer to 45,000 pounds, which will leave you with only enough for 35,000 pounds to be put into the box. That's not very much. Uh, the majority of my loads are about 41 to 42,000 pounds. So when you start cutting that back, then it's gonna, it's gonna make a difference. And then I, I'm still questioning how he's going to sell this truck for only $180,000. The, uh, you know, the battery is said to cost between 140 to 150 or at least it was um, up until magically up until he developed the truck so what you know what's uh how's the battery going to all of a sudden decrease in value because even if it decreased to a hundred thousand dollars you know say it's a, say it's you know a third of the price you know magically vanishes and it's down to, like you said, about a hundred thousand dollars. Well, that means that the truck itself, you know, there's it's still, you know, the truck itself will um, only be eighty thousand dollars. So I, again, I don't really, you know, it, not, it's not making sense. And I know I'm just some dumb truck driver, but math is math. You know, I don't really understand how that makes sense. Uh, you don't have to be a mathematician to really figure that out when one of these trucks a diesel powered truck right now a fully loaded you know diesel powered over the road truck uh, costs about 150,000 to 160,000 dollars you know that's with like pretty much every bell and whistle and creature comfort that you can ask for and the diesel engine itself I think might cost about like say you had to re Say the diesel engine went out and you had to buy a whole new brand, so you bought a brand new engine for it. And that might set you back about 25000 I think, is about what a diesel engine would cost. So that means, that say, say the diesel engine costs $30,000. That means the rest of this truck, which doesn't sound like it's going to be anywhere near as high tech as the Tesla truck, the rest of this truck, other than the $30,000 battery to make that, that, that price $150,000, you're looking at $120,000 for the truck itself without the power plant. So say $120,000 on top of a $100,000 battery. Now you're talking $220,000. And from what it sounds like, it's going to be a much more sophisticated truck. So with sophistication comes a bigger... Uh, bill especially initially you know every new tech every time a new technology is presented it always costs more up front you know as the time goes on it you know the prices you know well you know once there's more competition uh the price starts to come down because the, uh, the competition drives the price down right so the more competition there will be the lower the price will become but that first product always costs the most so I don't see how it's going to be a hundred and eighty thousand dollars I just don't see it uh, I, you know maybe I'm wrong but and I know there's gonna be a lot of people out there 
gracefully, telling me how wrong I am. So that's that's great. But I again, I, I've been in this industry for 10 years, which is a drop in the bucket compared to a lot of people. And the majority of the industry out here, the majority of the people that actually drive these trucks would agree with what I'm saying. It just doesn't make sense. You know, I mean, yeah, you've got companies out there that are putting their, uh, they're, they're, they're buying these trucks, they're putting in their uh, deposits for these trucks for Tesla, but the company owners have never been behind the wheel of a truck. They don't understand, they, they just don't, they don't actually understand uh, firsthand the industry. Like I've said before, they understand numbers and things like that, but that's not understanding the real time, the industry itself. It's two different things. And then I had uh, somebody, uh, in, in, in my last video, I tried, or I had people try to tell me, again, people that have never sat foot in a truck, tried to tell me uh, that only 5% of all trucks on the road need to be a sleeper truck. That is the most laughable thing I have ever heard. Anybody who has ever driven down the interstate for more than 10 miles will agree that the majority of trucks you see are sleeper trucks. And that's because, yes, there's a lot of short haul runs, but there's also regional, which regional runs do a lot of, uh, you know, short haul runs. Uh, they might just work in, you know, a, a number of states, uh, and their average, their average uh, shipment might be about 400 miles. So, you know, it's a shipment that can easily be done in a day, in less than a day. But these people are still gone for a week or so at a time from home. They are still, you know, they they run these loads back and forth because, you know, they pick up a load, take it 400, 500 miles, and then they got to pick up another load and take it another four or 500 or 600 miles. So they still need a sleeper. They might not be quote unquote over the road, but they're still gone for a week at a time. You know, they, you know, because they still have, they, they still have to sleep in, in, in their trucks. The percentage, I mean, I can't, I can't give you an exact percentage on day cabs to sleeper trucks, but it's obvious when you drive down the highway that the majority are sleepers. And like I said, that's because there's more than just the over the road. There's regional and regional drivers have sleeper trucks. And then another skepticism I saw, or I, I heard uh, from another uh, YouTube trucker, uh, and he was uh, absolutely right. This is one that I hadn't even thought of yet. Uh, but, uh, and this is uh, probably the biggest YouTube truck driver there is. He's got probably the most uh, subscribers of any trucking channel. Um, and, you know, he's, I'd say, well, he's got about 71 or 72,000 subscribers, which for a trucking channel is massive because it's a pretty small niche. Uh, it's a pretty small niche out here in the YouTube arena. So anyways, he's got about 70 or, you know, about 72,000 subs, uh, and he's Canadian. So he does most of his runs up in, up, up in Canada, comes down to the States quite a bit. And anybody, I won't name him, but anybody that has spent you know, five minutes uh, searching YouTube truck drivers will know who I'm talking about. But he's been down in the States, uh, all, you know, down to Florida. Um, you know, like I said, does a lot of uh, Canada, obviously. And he made up, uh, or he brought up a pretty good point. And that point was that, yeah, or, uh, Elon says, that the battery will be good for 500 miles. 
but did he test that battery in the colder northern climates? Because that will significantly reduce the charge. Um, he, like he said, uh, you know, and I'm going to have people say, well, you know, this is this seems to be the go-to uh, rebuttal uh, whenever I question Tesla. Uh, some of the people like to come on and say, well, don't you think that they would have thought about all these things before they actually put anything into production and before they did this, you know, they got all these smart people working there. Wouldn't they, wouldn't they think about that? The good folks at Freightliner, which is a trucking company and has been for decades, the good folks at Freightliner did not even think to test their truck in the northern climates when they uh, designed the new Cascadia. They tested it from California to, I think it was Louisiana. It was all southern, or maybe South Carolina. The point was, or the point is, they, they drove it through all the southern states. They never saw northern climates. And then when it hit the northern climates, I guess up in Canada, they're having all kinds of issues with uh, that Cascadia. Um, I'm not really sure what the issues are, but they're having quite a few. Because they didn't test it up there. The good folks at Freightliner did not even think to test their semi-truck that they have been developing for decades up in the northern climates. So it's very easy to understand why somebody would criticize Elon and say, well, I wonder if he's done this or I wonder if he's done... Because if you're not in the... If, if you're not in the industry, which he's not. Freightliner is much more in the industry than Elon is, or than Tesla is. And if you're not in this industry, it's uh, very easy to overlook certain issues. Very easy. So don't say it can't be done. Don't say that they're smart people, so don't you think they would have thought of this? Because I deal with it every damn day. They don't. Anyways, that's just kind of my, that, that's just what I wanted to say about it, because, uh, yeah, I just, a couple new concerns that were brought to my attention about the Tesla truck. Um, you know, if anybody has any input on what the battery is going to actually weigh, like I said, I mean, uh, what I heard, it's going to be, um, you know, if you want a flat road, if you want to be able to travel down flat roads, which is where Elon brought or got the original 500 mile estimate anyway, uh, which means if you're on hilly terrain, it's going to be less than that. And if you want, if you want to maintain the 500 mile charge on hilly terrain, you're going to have to add, you know, uh, more to the battery, uh, which will increase the weight. You know, so I mean, you could, you know, if you want to drive it out in the Rockies on a regular basis, uh, you could be looking at a 20,000 pound battery. So that's a little, a little bit heavy, and it, it is, it, it's a little peculiar that Elon did not uh, discuss the weight. You know, like I said, he discussed zero to sixty time, which again, like I've said before, and somebody else said in their video, the truckers don't care about the zero to sixty time because if you accelerate too fast, you're going to dump your load. Your load's going to shift. You're going to, uh, you're, you're going to damage your product that's in that trailer. So even right now, depending on the product you have back there, a diesel truck could still accelerate fast enough if you stomp on that gas pedal or the, the accelerator, it could still uh, do some damage to the load, depending on uh, what the load is. But anyways, that's all I wanted to say about that. So feel free to comment and uh, tell me why I'm wrong, and I'll, uh, I'll enjoy entertaining your... Uh, inexperienced in the trucking industry but if you have you know legitimate uh, comments and whatnot I'll uh, be glad to answer them so y'all have a good one out there and be safe we'll talk to you guys later